In pre-calculus section 2.6, we're dealing with inequalities. Now, all of these uh, you, you were able to solve in sections and chapters below as an equal sign. But the rules of inequalities are the same as the equal sign. There's only one big thing, is that if or when I multiply or divide by a negative, right, I need to flip the sign. That's it. So I treat it just like an equal sign. All the rules say the same. It's just if I multiply. Now, if, I, if, if the, the number I'm multiplying or dividing is already negative, that's not flipping the sign. It's when I bring a negative over and using multiplication or division, not, not subtracting, just multiplication or division, a negative number, I need to take the inequality and flip the sign. Other than that, I just treat it just like an equal sign. So let's see. We have x squared minus 8x plus 16. We have lots of ways to solve. Um, equa quadratic equations. I'm going to start by minusing one so it um, so we have z everything on one side and, everyth and then zero on the other. So we end up with x squared minus 8x plus 16. Sorry, 16 minus 1 is 15, less than or equal to zero. Two numbers, when multiplied together, gets me um, 15. Multiplied together gets me. Um, positive 15, but when added together, it gets me negative 8. This is x minus 3 and x minus 5. So now I have to figure out when these are less than 0, so basically when they're negative. And this is the other part of these inequalities that we have to do when we're dealing with um, these kind of, uh, these inequalities. Because I can't, if this was an equal sign, then I just set each to 0. But I'm going to make it into an equal sign, and I'll show you why. I'm going to do negative 3 equals 0, and x minus 5 equals 0. This will give us uh, markers, and let me show you what that means. If I do um, x equals 3 and x equals 5, so this is a marker of 3, and a marker of 5. It breaks my timeline into three parts. Anything that's less than 3, things that are between 3 and 5, and things that are uh, larger than 5. All, none, or some of these um, portions of the line graph are going to fit, and I need to know which ones. Now, I'm just going to use numbers to multiply. Now, do pay attention that all I need to know is if which ones are going to give me negative. No, because anything less than zero is negative, so I just have to figure this out. If I plug in, um, let's see, less than three is zero. So I'm going to test zero. I'm going to test x equals zero. Then here I'll test x equals four. And here I'll test x equals um, six. And I'll test it in here. Right? So zero here will give me... A zero, which is positive, and a zero. Zero here will give me a negative three and a negative five. So I'll have two negatives, which then makes a negative. This counts, right? Two negatives multiplied. It doesn't matter what the number is, as long as they're both. Sorry, this will make positives. These will make both positives, so um, this won't work. So I don't. I can do the numbers if you want to do the numbers to test it, or I can just figure out give me positive or negative. This one, four minus three gives me a positive. 4 minus 5 gives me a negative. So this, a positive and a negative multiplied together, will give me a negative. So that's less than 0. And then this one, I have 6 minus 3 will give me a positive. And then 6 minus 5 will also give me a positive. This will not work. So my answer only goes between 3 and 5. So that means I'm going to do x is between 3 and 5. And that's how I figure out my answer. I make these equal to zero. I set my markers, right? And then I test the different parts of the graph. And whichever gives me anything less than zero, if it was the other way, I'd be looking for positive. But this one, um, zero is bigger, so that means this would have to be negative. So whichever one gave me negative, 
um, is the one that fits. So this one would give me positive, this gave me positive, so this would be the only one that works. So let's see if that made sense for this next one. It's the same thing. I'm going to start by just making it equal to, uh, make bring everything to the other side. So I'm going to do negative 3x squared. So this is x cubed minus 3x squared minus 22x is greater than negative 24. I'm going to add 24 to both sides. This, I add 24 to both sides, I get x cubed minus 3x squared minus 22x plus 24 is greater than 0. So I'm here where I am here. I'm going to, I'm going to factor it and then find my markers on my graph. Now I have three zeros to focus on here. And I'm going to find a factor so that I can divide it. By using what we learned last section, I'm gonna go ahead and graph it. X cubed minus three X squared minus 22 X plus 24. And then I'm going to find the table. So if I find the table here, I can see that um, I have a 0 at x equals 1. So I'm going to go ahead and factor by 1. We divide by 1. So we have 1, negative 3, negative 22, and 24. Right? I'm factoring. So, I would bring this down, so 1 times 1 is 1, and then I'm adding negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2, this gives me negative 2, and then negative 22 minus, ne and that, my, sorry, negative 22 minus 2 is negative 24, and then this is negative 24, which gives me then 0. So this is my x squared x, right? So from here, I'm going to factor. So two numbers, when multiplied together, gets me negative 24, but when added together, gets me negative 2. I would do x minus 6 and x plus 4. So my four markers, I mean my three markers, are um, x minus 6, x plus 4, and then x, sorry, yeah, x minus 6, x plus 4, and then x minus 1. Because remember, this is x minus c, so x minus 1 equals 0. Right? So, hopefully, so go ahead and pause and write this down, because then I'm going to put it down so we can do the testing for the markers. Okay, so pause and write this down. Again, we have x minus 6, x plus 4, and x minus 1. So my markers are x equals 6, negative 4, and positive 1. So that means 6, 1, negative 4. Now I'm looking, sorry, this should be um, greater than zero. All right, because I have a multiplied or divided by a negative, so it's greater than zero. Um, so I'm looking for this, I'm looking for positive. In order for it to work, I'm looking for positive. So if I plug in negative four, a number that's negative, so let's try x, equals negative 3. So negative 3 minus 6, this gives me a negative. Negative 3 plus 4 gives me a positive. And negative 3 minus 1 gives me a negative. A negative and a positive would be a positive, and this would be, sorry, this would be a negative and another negative. So this gives me a positive, so this checks out, right? The next one, am I looking for 
And then for the next one, then I'm going to do um, between negative 4 and 1. So let's do x equals 0. This would give me a negative. This would give me a positive, And this would give me a negative. This is positive, so this 2 will check out. So let's try x equals 2. 2 minus 6 would give me a negative. 2 plus 4 would give me a positive. 2 minus 1 would give me a positive. This would give me a negative. So this doesn't work out. Right? And then the next one. Let's check this real quick. This gives me a negative. A negative 3 plus 4 gives me a positive. So negative positive. Okay. And then for this one, we have, let's try x equals 8. So this gives me a positive. This gives me a 6 and 4 gives me a positive. And this gives me a positive. So this would be a positive. I don't know where this multiplication comes from. So then therefore this works. So everything works except between 1 and 6. So anything, so x can be less than 1. Sorry, this is negative 4. This should be here. Oh, that's why. Because I was wondering, something seems off. Okay, never mind. So let's try negative 5. So negative 5 and negative 6 would give me a negative. Negative 5 and 4 would give me a negative. Negative, negative. So this would be positive. This would be a negative. So this wouldn't work. So my answers would be between this and this and anything bigger than 6. So I would write that it's between, and because it has no, uh, because it has no line underneath, it, is, it does negative 4, between negative 4 and 1. And also, this is a union, that means also, it can be, x can be 6 and greater, so infinity. And that's how I would write that. So it can be between negative 4 and 1, and anything bigger than 6, so 6 and 2 infinity. And that's a union because it can't be between these and it can't be anything less than negative. So hopefully that made sense. Go ahead and pause and write this down. So when we're doing um, rational inequalities, or rational inequalities to make sure to include the zeros of numerator and denominator when checking. So unlike solving for x, um, where we're trying to multiply to get rid of the denominator, we want to just turn this all into one fraction and then do the testing, right? So we do 3x plus 4 minus 3. Um, this is over 1. So my common denominator is x plus 2. So I end up with 3x plus 4 minus 3x plus 2 all over my common number, which is x plus 2, is greater than or equal to 0. So these cancel out, leaving me with 4 plus 2, which is 6, over x plus 2. So when I'm solving this, which is greater than or equal to 0, my testing Because I, because I solved this top part and solved the bottom, I, I put this equal to zero to find my zeros and put this equal to zero to find my markers. But the top doesn't really have a marker. So all I know is um, uh, x plus 2 equals zero. If the top had an x, and I'd solve it. But because I got rid of the x's, I only do this one. So x equals negative 2. So this only splits my graph into two parts, negative 2 to negative infinity or 2 to positive infinity. So let me test from here. This gives me 
negative 2, so let's try, let's test x minus 3. So x minus 3 would give me, the top is already positive, right? And then the bottom would be, um, the top would be positive, and then, because it's automatically positive, and then a negative 3 and 2 would give this a negative number. So this would be a negative. So that would then work. And then we have, um, let's try x equals 0. This would give me a positive on top and positive on bottom. So then um, this would give me a positive. Oh, wait, sorry. I'm looking for when it's bigger than 0. So this won't work, but this will work. So then my answer, which also includes negative 2, so my answer would be negative 2 until infinity. Now we lucked out on this one because there's only one that it breaks. When you have these rational, it's probably three or more because you might have this into two bubbles and one. So you have to do it for every bubble, top and bottom. And each marker is for each bubble. So you'll have to factor the top and factor the bottom. So go ahead and pause and write this down. Try a guided practice 2A and 4B, 2A and 4B, and I will see you in class.